Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Shri Gyan Manji Vidya Peet for the students of standard 10 in which we are learning the subject of English. Students from the previous few lectures we have started with chapter number 9 of the uh, main book first flight. So let us take a quick recap of what we have learned so far in this chapter. This is lecture 5 for chapter number 9 of first flight. Name of the chapter is Madam Rides the Bus. Here uh, the, chap the chapter is an extract of uh, the uh, book written by Wali Kanan, a South Indian writer who writes in his mother tongue. Then the stories got translated into English for a uh, wider viewership of that of those books written by the famous author. Here, Madam stands, by, uh, stands for a small little girl of uh, eight years by the name of Wali Ammai. And in short, we know her as Wali. Wali, according to her age, uh, she is beyond her age as far as intellectuality is concerned. Uh, as far as planning and execution of uh, some of her decisions. We can see quite a lot of maturity as far as an 80 year old girl is considered. Uh, we see lots of personality traits of her but simply put this chapter is for fun where an 80 year old girl Wally aspires to uh, take a ride on the bus for the first time in her life and that also all alone by herself and for that to accomplish her target, her aim, her goal, that is to ride, take a ride in that bus. She meticulously plans out each and every detail. The first thing about that is she is a very observant girl. Uh, she is a very good observer. Plus, she can think in some methodical way. Put the plans in some methodical and meticulous way, uh, gather all the information which is quite a difficult part for an 8 year old girl but she is quite good at it. When she makes up her mind to take a ride on the bus all alone from her village to the nearest town which is 18 kilometers away, she gathers all the required information herself, tits and bits from here and there from lots of people so that nobody has a doubt on her why this girl is too much inquisitive about uh, the bus or where the bus is going, how far does it go, where it goes, uh, when does it go. But she herself by observing, by uh, asking a few questions here and there, she gathers all the required information herself. We all know that too ride a bus we need to pay a fare. So she gets information about that and then she in a very convenient way but still in a methodical and a meticulous way in a very fine way she saves the money that she wants. Yes she is an 8 year old girl so she is quite innocent but in a very playful manner. Suppose some Mossi, some relative came and gave her one paisa, two paisa to go and buy something she wants. She wouldn't buy those. Although it is very tempting, she has money in her hands and she wants chocolates or sweets that is much popular among the kids. But she puts away that temptation in order to save money for the ride. So in that way she collects some money. 60 paisa that is 30 paisa one side journey she collects it she is able to collect that 60 paisa required and then she puts the planning in action that is stops the bus near her house before it is about to cross the village and start for the highway she is able to get a seat she is able to answer in a quite and bold confident manner to each and everybody she meets on the bus, especially the conductor who is trying to have lots of fun with her. Although all of those things were quite innocent, she considers herself, as we know, 
uh, quite above her age she considers herself not a lady she objects to that thing at the same time nobody should call her a child she, because she is no more a child she is in between that she is a growing up girl and she should be treated in that way eight years is quite an age for her as she thinks then we have that whole description where she is enjoying her ride thoroughly uh, she has she is seeing sceneries on both sides that is opposite window also and the window where she is sitting she is seeing scenery she didn't imagine it would be and as the bus gathers speed it becomes more and more exciting for her this a few incidents happen on the road for example uh, a stray cow uh, jumping and just frightened and jumping right in the front of the bus and then we come to that very exciting uh, description and experience of a train crossing that railway crossing and uh, then she comes to the town where that is where we stopped in the previous lecture that the bus has come to its last stop in the town everybody gets off and the bus conductor asks her also to get off but she says no i am not going outside i am going back okay you want to go back that's what the conductor says but if you are here make use of your time and go and see the various sites in the town and then come back we'll take you home but she is very much afraid because once she steps down she loses the chance perhaps she might get lost because she is new and she has seen a lot of crowd of which she is very much afraid that she might get lost in the crowd nobody would help her and then how is she going to ba return back to her home so given all the aspects aspects over here the surest thing is to keep sitting in the bus so that the bus is even actually going back to the village so just keep sitting back and the conductor would also not mind right she is just sitting over there a small little girl so uh, her confidence level is quite high but at the same time she is a small little girl that we should not forget she is all alone and she doesn't want to take the risk of getting off the bus and uh, losing the chance of again going back to the village on time so she thinks about all the options in front of her and she chooses the best option just to stay in the bus till again the bus is ready to take her back to the village so from there on we continue well then why not go to that stall over there and have something to drink nothing to be afraid of about that either now you don't go far away yes the bus is here the driver is also uh, uh, gone away now i am also going to go away you are all alone in the bus nothing to worry about that it's a, the same thing it's all as a small village same way this is a small town nothing to worry you are absolutely safe you don't have to go and venture out into the market this bus is here and just in front of that bus there is a stall where you can get i suppose you want to have tea or some soft drink cold drink whatever you can have something to drink over there as a refreshment right so nothing to worry about that the bus is not going any as soon as you see me climbing the coming on to the bus instantly you run and come over here it's perfectly safe nothing to be so in that way the conductor is trying to be uh, a little cooperative and helpful over here trying to comfort the girl try to take out that fright in her that uh, what happens if she misses the bus so we see a very good person in this conductor oh no i couldn't do that now why couldn't she do that because if she goes to the stall and she doesn't have that much money right she already pays she had 60 paisa now she has already paid 30 now remaining is 30 paisa now that she has to pay for the fare back to the village so she doesn't have absolutely she has nothing no more extra money to go and have a drink over there so well then let me bring you a cold drink again if you are not going over there i'll bring you something to eat or drink but again he has to pay she has to pay the conductor right so she doesn't have the money so she has to refuse no i don't have enough money and we see a very innocent girl over here in this line no i don't have enough money that means as a small girl she is very well, very well able to check out what the conductor is trying to do 
the conductor is just trying to make her comfortable so that she that frighten her that uh, suppose i get down and i might get lost or if i go to that stall and meanwhile i am distracted somewhere and the bus takes off uh, again what the girl wants is i should not lose my trip back to the village then again going to that stall is going to take some extra paisa or extra money in order to buy some cause of drink cold drink or tea etc beverages so she doesn't have that money here we see a very honest girl trying to tell the conductor that it's very it's very kind of you that you, you think of me in that way that if you are if you don't wish to go to the stall i'll bring you something to drink but she refuses because she says clearly i do not have that money just give me my ticket that's all it would be my treat see we see a very good person over here he is just trying to make that child comfortable because he knows 8 year old uh, old girl um, just uh, would be like her daughter right so here he is he is trying to make that small little girl comfortable and uh, okay you don't have money okay if the uh, fare for uh, the bus from the village to the town is 30 paisa i think the cold drink would be hardly 3 4 paisa 5 paisa maybe maximum right so the conductor says okay you don't have money it's my treat that means i will buy you a soft drink and i'll give it to you you can enjoy that drink just be seated over here and i'll take you back home not cost you anything right so you don't have to worry about anything you don't have to worry about the money i will pay for that cold drink you just be comfortable yes you look a little bit frightened because the conductor is a good person and he can see that confusion on the face of the little girl so we see a very good character of the conductor though always he is trying to act funny or and have some funny conversation with the little girl all of that was just to make that small little girl comfortable and he knows maybe she is coming all alone well, all right she is afraid uh, she is frightened so what he wants is to just soothe her calm her down and uh, it's just uh, you cannot say hospitality but it's just a, a sense of trying to make her calm down and make her e- at ease comfortable no she said firmly please no so she has to refuse because she doesn't want to accept somebody's obligation of buying her a drink because she doesn't have money to pay the conductor shrugged okay he didn't pay much attention okay you, you don't have money i'll buy again she says no so it's okay right the girl doesn't want a soft drink and they waited until it was time for the bus to begin the return journey again there were many, uh, many passengers it is afternoon time remember afternoon time usually everybody uh, it is the nap time or uh, time for uh, lunch at home or uh, so there would be few passengers so both of them now it's not written over here but they waited until it was time that means the but conductor being a very good man did not want to leave the small little girl all alone in the bus he also must have wanted to take a break small break but he didn't go so in this way we see a very very good character of that conductor over here uh, in helping out the girl to be comfortable the girl did not want to have a break of course she did not have money for that okay understood he obliged and i'll buy you a drink but again the girl refuses right and uh, to make the girl comfortable if he leaves the bus then of course the small little girl though she wouldn't express it but all that time 15 20 minutes she would be full of fright because there is nobody in the bus right so the conductor he also does not go away from the bus and he also sits over there and waits till people they know the bus timings they are going to come in one by one and again the bus will be filled up uh, partially because it's uh, uh, off timing right but we see a very good character of the bus conductor over here though he is quite he is acting quite funny but at the same time it is his responsibility this is one of the uh, striking point about the character of the bus conductor over here though 
is acting funny, uh, trying to poke fun at uh, uh, the little girl, not taunting her, but trying to make some fun out of it, trying to make her himself laugh, other passengers laugh, all those things aside. But when it comes to his responsibility, his passenger's safety, we see the work of the conductor at, it, at his best. Yes, if the girl is not wishing to uh, go to the market or even step down from the bus and go to the nearby stall, she doesn't have money, he offers her a drink, but then that is also refused. So he could have gone to take a small break outside, but then he realizes his duty that there's a small little girl in the bus and it becomes his duty about the safety and security of the bus of the little girl till she doesn't get off the bus right so he also doesn't go anywhere he also sits over there and both of them wait while away the time till it's time for the bus to again go from the town to the village and people start coming into the bus and though not many but then whatever passengers they had again they were few now when we come to the last part that is 9.4 won't your mother be looking for you? The conductor asked when he gave the girl her ticket. So, now it's time to go back. Again, very few passengers are there and within no time he would give them tickets. So, he is again trying to inquire from the girl whether the family members know, especially she's 8 years old. So, must be very close to the mother and must be staying at home with the mother. Right? These 8, 10 years old children, they usually stay with moms at home and uh, mom should be knowing. So, does your mommy know about your excursion? Then, won't your mother be looking for you, right? Because half an hour has already gone by, 15 minutes more, and now, again, we have to while away half an hour for the return journey. So, you are missing one and a half hour. So, won't your mother be looking for you? No, no one will be looking for me. She knows that. Only when present in the house is the mother. She is having a good sleep in the afternoon, so she won't be noticing her absence, so nobody is looking for She gives a very curt reply. What the dialogue over here suggests is the conductor is trying to have some conversation with her. Yes, the, now the, con uh, the conductor is also uh, very much concerned about her, that she is traveling all alone. She didn't go to the town for any purpose. Otherwise, she would have got down. <coughs> she might be knowing the way somewhere, some relative or someone in the bazaar, she wanted to meet someone. Uh, but after the girl refused to step down from the bus, after the girl refused the offer of a soft drink and produced again 30 pesa, now this is an unpurposeful visit to the town. Serving no purpose, the conductor is yet not able to understand that this is the first time the girl is traveling by bus. Right? She wanted to have that excitement of riding a bus. The conductor is not aware of that. So he is trying to actually know the correct reason why unnecessarily somebody would go to the from the village to the town and come back from the town to the village even without stepping out of the bus. So he is just inquisitive and trying to have some dialogue with her and the girl is very making very sure that the actual fact doesn't come out. So she gives curt. Curt means very small and only that much necessary answer only is given by the girl. No. If you are saying is your mother looking for you? Is your mother knowing this? Very giving a very curt, very small reply. No. Nobody is looking. So she is trying to control the conversation whereas we know the conductor is talkative and he keeps on having dialogue with the little girl. The bus started and again there were some wonderful sights. So now she is on the opposite side. She didn't leave her seat. Right? So now she is going to face the opposite side when going back from the town to the village. Right? So first she had been looking to one side of the road. Now she is looking to the other side of the road. While he wasn't bored in the slightest and greatest, uh, greeted everything with the same excitement she had felt for the first time. So now it was the other side. Now the other side was also as much as exciting and interesting as it was for the time when she was going from village to town. So she didn't leave a single thing unnoticed. She 
made whole of her journey very excited and she didn't miss her. she kept out uh, she kept on looking out of the window and trying to absorb as much thing as possible and then everything was new to her so she greeted the things in the same way while going from the village to the town but suddenly she saw a young cow lying dead by the roadside just where it had been struck by some fast moving vehicle but here we see a sudden change in uh, the journey from the town to the village remember when the bus was going from the village to the town at that at that time the incident that happened which made the little girl so much excited and so much she was having so much fun she was laughing so much the tears started rolling uh, uh, rolling down her eyes she laughed that much she couldn't control her laughter just because she saw a cow going wild on the road and jumping up and down just ahead of the road because she was frightened the same thing turns into a sorrowful event so what the little girl learns over here the experience that she learns over here is about life and death happiness and sadness happiness and sorrowfulness yes because when she was going from village to town to the cow was jumping up and down trying to gallop right in front of the bus it was lively that scenery that scene made wali go mad with laughter now the opposite thing happens what happens over here is the the cow we know was already frightened and it was a stray cow and must be on the road right in the middle of the road this bus driver must have taken care to slow down the bus and take care that the cow is not harmed but some other fast moving vehicle might not have got a chance all of a sudden again with the honking of the horn the cow might have got frightened again and was jumping here and there on the road and the fast moving vehicle couldn't stop or couldn't slow down in time and must have hit the cow and the cow was lying dead on the road so the same cow which was quite you can say quite lively on the journey to the town on the journey back to the village the cow is dead but suddenly she saw a young cow lying dead by the roadside where it had been struck by some fast moving vehicle so an accident had happened with the cow and she got badly hit by a fast moving vehicle and she was now lying dead on the side of the road isn't that the same cow that ran in front of the bus on a trip to the town she asked the conductor so she she got so much hurt by that incident yes that she asked the conductor if it was the same cow that they saw uh, while going from the village to the town the bus conductor nodded is the bus conductor understood the feeling of the small girl who though didn't see the accident with her own eyes but she had seen a lively cow a live cow when the journey began from village to the town and on the way back that same cow is dead lying on the side of the road so the conductor understands didn't say a word but this noted in affirmative noted uh, to say yes by the moving of the action uh, the head from head up and down that is nodding and it means an affirmative or a yes and she was overcome with sadness yes she couldn't bear that a cow which was alive just half an hour or say 40 45 minutes ago is now lying dead on the side of the road what had been a lovable beautiful creature just a little while ago had now suddenly lost its charm 
its life and looked so horrible, so frightening as it lay there, legs spread angled, a fixed stare in its lifeless eyes, blood all over. This is the description of the dead cow lying on the side of the road. Uh, it is not an exaggeration of the sorrowful feeling that the girl, but it's a horrible sight that the author is describing. Yes, uh, we have already discussed about it that these uh, village people, rural area people, they simply love the animals. Yes, they are very much attached with these domestic animals. They uh, rear them up since their birth and until they are matured, give them milk and then they bear young ones and the children play with their young ones also. So they have a lots of attachment with these domestic creatures. So uh, although the cow was frightened and it was running here and there trying to gallop like a horse right in the middle of the road just in front of the bus not allowing the bus to go ahead and until it was calm and then the bus could continue with the journey till then the cow was cowed lively though frightened but it was lively yes and that same cow what is the description over here it had been a very lovable and adoring and a beautiful creature just a while ago and now suddenly that charm is lost that liveliness is lost because the cow is dead suddenly lost its charm that is what is the charm its life was its charm and now it looked so horrible because now the uh, legs are spread angled yes they are just spread everywhere and as it lay there lifeless a fixed tear yes when the fast moving vehicle must have hit the cow it must have got a sudden shock and the eyes remained wide open till the cow was dead. So the eyes are even now having a fixed tear open and having a fixed tear because there is no life in the cow. Blood was everywhere. Yes, and it was a very sorrowful, a very pitiful sight which the girl had to see, had to bear. Right? So here we see a new thing introduced by the author about life and death, the experience of life and death that the small little girl had with the help of this. Uh, small little incident so we can understand the greatness of the author over here he tries to put in all the emotions feelings that an eight-year-old girl can experience uh, can have even out of her thought because when she saw that uh, a cow galloping right in front of the bus she was filled with humor she was laughing like anything and that same thing now turns into sadness. She is experiencing, she is having an experience which she is going to remember throughout her life. Is some of these incidents that happen in the childhood, they leave a mark. Yes, they leave a mark permanently. And uh, children, they understand a lot of things about life with the help of these type of emotions and feelings and these type of circumstances. The bus moved on. Now, the bus crossed the dead creature which was lying on the uh, side of the road and the bus moved on. The memory of the cow haunted her. She had seen a very horrifying picture of the dead cow, the legs spread angled, blood everywhere, a fixed stare in the eyes and a lifeless creature. So, it was, it was very, very fresh. When the bus moved on, that sight does not go away. Horrifying sight does not go away from his mind and it keeps on lingering. Dampening her enthusiasm. She was very enthusiastic about that uh, ride. Enthusiastic, filled with energy, uh, eager to accept all excitement. That's called enthusiastic, right? She was very hopeful about that ride of her in the bus. And that enthusiasm seems to be dampening. It's a very good word, dampening. Dampening, becoming less and filled with 
uh, the negative sides of the emotions that is sorrowfulness sadness okay happiness is one brighter side of the emotion same way uh, sadness sorrowfulness that is the negative side of the emotions so those are that enthusiasm she had about getting that excitement of having a ride in the bus that was a positive one that was being decreasing with the sight that she just saw she no longer wanted to see out of her window right because as soon as she sees that picture of that cow comes in front of her and she doesn't want to look at it so she has lost all the interest in looking out of the window and enjoying the scenery is out of the window because actually when the scenery is in front of her the picture of the dead cow comes in front of her she is not able to remove it so instantly from her mind she sat thus glued to her seat as if she is glued or stuck to the seat until the bus reached the village at 3:40 so uh, with that scene of the dead cow which is lingering in her thoughts in her mind uh, a rest of the journey ends without any excitement she is filled with sorrow sadness and she stops looking out of the bus and meanwhile the journey ends the bus has reached her village and it was the time was 3:40 so 1 o'clock she went away 3:40 just in time before mother would wake up she stood up and stretched herself uh, she was seated over here since the start of the journey she didn't budge from her seat and she was quite uh glued to the seat say after the incident of the dead cow so she stood up she stretched herself and then she turned back to the conductor and said sir well sir i hope to see you again so you come regularly on this route and second time i would if i want to go to the town certainly i hope to meet you now the stop has come she has to get down from bus okay madam he answered smiling whenever you feel like a bus ride come and join us and don't forget to bring your fare so the conductor he sees that the girl is now going to uh, get down from the bus and uh, had a very good time with her uh, and saw to it that she safely reaches back to her village and then also invites her to come to the bus whenever she wants to have to the, a ride on the bus and if you want to have a ride on the bus you are not going to get any free ride so please don't forget to bring your fare she laughed and jumped down from the bus and then she went running straight for her home because we know the bus stops just near her home she gets down and the bus rolls ahead and she is very happy to have a ride in the bus all alone by herself paying the money full from her savings and now she is happy with that bus ride and goes running towards her home when she entered her house when she entered her house she found her mother awake and talking to one of the wali's aunts the one from the south street so when she entered the house we see that the mother was up because somebody had come to meet who was that somebody one of the wali's aunts had come to meet over there so there was no time that mother would know the absence of the child from the house yes now she doesn't know about it but wali's mother is present she is totally awake and there is a presence of wali's aunts over there also and both of them are talking they are not worried they are just having a normal talk that means wali's absence was not noted we have to learn a lot from whatever is written in the text and which one aunt was there which of the aunt was there the one from the south street she had come this aunt was a real chatterbox what is a chatterbox a very talkative person is called a chatterbox a talkative person doesn't need any subject he just keeps on talking on any subject until you try to stop her then also she won't be able to stop because constant talking that's called chatterbox so this aunt was a real chatterbox even the 8 year old girl 
knew that that this aunt is a real chatterbox a real talkative person won't stop talking never closing her mouth when she started talking many people are like that yes once the mouth starts talking there is no stopping to it yes the topic is immaterial yes the topic just keeps on coming in the mind topics keep on changing and she will have and that person will always have something to say about it won't listen to the other person won't let the other person talk also so it was a real character that one she was a chatterbox and she didn't need any topic to talk on and can continuously keep on talking for hours on end and where have you been said her aunt when wali came in now do you understand it should be the mother who should be the asking the question where wali was instead aunt is asking the question where have you been so did the aunt come to meet wali no she came to meet wali's mother mother is responsible for the child mother should be asking the child now she is such a chatterbox on top of that bosses him hey, when you go to somebody else's house all those might be relatives of yours then also bossism should not be done over there yes where the child goes where the child comes from and that should be that family or that households matter it should not be the matter of it. yes so this uh, relatives uh, they can say anything they are always free to say any, something and where have you been said the aunt when wali came in she spoke very casually so here we see yet another personality trait of wali now what could be that personality trait she has done something wrong we all understand that she has done something wrong without taking permission of her parents especially mother who was at home she independently on her own without informing anybody took a very very big risk of riding the bus to the nearest town anything could have happened on the journey she had taken a very very big risk without notifying anybody else in the family or even the mother and then she has completed the journey from the town to the village also without any mishap that was a very good thing that happened to wali but now she has to get hold of herself because she has to keep this secret to herself she cannot let anyone know the secret especially the mother and the aunt so she has to act very very confidently over here so that nobody none of the two can doubt her that something wrong has been done by this girl so she spoke very casually very casually means as if nothing has happened that is a very very good say a good quality on her part pretension to pretend as if everything is all right everything is under control and without any excitement she spoke uh, casually means without any excitement without any flow of emotions just in a casual manner not expecting a reply so wali just smiled and her mother and aunt went on with their conversation right she spoke she spoke very casually not expecting a reply right so the aunt spoke it spoke in a very casual manner that didn't want an answer here there was a question which needed no answer yes you simply give a smile okay i was here by that's the meaning and both of them understood so she the little girl handles the situation in a very very good manner she is able to understand that the question is posed before her but the question does not need any answer just give a smile it means i was here by no need for you to know where i was right that sort of attitude and her mother and aunt they also understood she has given a smile that means okay oh, i was here nowhere else 
and they went on with their conversation. Yes, you are right. So many things happen in the midst and in the world outside. How can we possibly know about everything? And even when we do know about something, then also we don't know any about anything about anything. And somebody says something, and okay, so they are both just chatting while they are there. And I am. There is no topic over there, right? So outside world, well, they never leave the village. We come to know with the situation of Ali that they hardly leave the town, right? Because the girl never had a ride in the bus, so it is out of question. So if they don't go outside, how can they know something has happened, right? So they are just whiling away and chatting away and passing the time. We often can't understand it completely. So whole of this dialogue, very important for you. Yes, direct indirect may. I'll be asking this question, this paragraph. Certainly so, it is a problem for you. Otherwise, in the entire text, in this entire dialogue, nothing much happens. They are just whiling away the time, passing the time. Is speaking nonsense. Oh yes, Brit Wale. What? What's the word say? Okay, Wale was also here, but they totally uh, ignored her. So she also tries to jump into into conversation, trying to pretend to be normal. What? Asked her mother. What's you say? What's that you said? Oh, I was just agreeing with what you said about things happening without our knowledge. She did not want to reveal the truth, but she gives a hint which both of them, are, of course, do not understand. What happens outside? What happens in your home that you don't know? Right? Your uh, girl went to the nearest town and came back, had a beautiful ride in the bus, a wonderful ride, an exciting ride in the bus, right? And both of you are talking over here. You should be responsible for my absence. You should have been searching for me in the village right now. I must have approached the police station also for one and a half hour. The girl was missing. Yes, do you know about, what do you say, what do you know about outside? You don't know what's happening inside your house. So, she is just jumping. This is called jumping into conversation. Two people are talking. How do you jump in? By commenting upon something. So, they ask question to you, you give reply, and now the three of you are talking. So, this is called jumping in the conversation. She just does exactly the same thing so that she's asked something she replies and the conversation keeps on going just a chit of a girl she she is said her aunt and yet look how she pokes her nose into our conversation just as though she were a grown lady so she is just a child and the aunt as a responsible adult has to comment on the behavior of her niece Right? So this is what is happening. It happens in each and every household. Yes, tumara beta badi badi baate karta hai. Ye itna sa hai. Yes, dekho kitni badi badi baate karta hai. Right? So that way, it's just a normal chat with the family members or the near and dear ones. They have a chit chat. So this girl, she's trying. The both the aunt is quite clever. Knows the girl is trying to jump into the conversation. Try to act as an adult, whereas she's just a small girl. So she's aware of the fact that the girl wants to jump into the conversation. So this is called refusing a person to join the conversation. Right? So this is called discouraging a person to join the conversation. So she's poking her dirty nose into, or she's trying to poke her nose into the conversation of two adults. Yeah, just look at her. She's just a chit of a bird. Right? Oh, just trying to prove she's a grown-up lady. Wally smiled to herself. She didn't want them to understand her smile. Wally gives a taunting smile. Yes, you think I'm a grown-up girl? Right? And you think I'm a small girl and you don't think I'm a grown-up girl? Yes, you don't know lots of things. For, exist, exa for example, I just came back from the uh, town. Do you know that? No. Will a small girl do that? No, a grown-up girl has to do that, right? So, I'm a grown-up girl. I'm quite big now. I'm eight years old. But do you know what I can do? You don't know. So, she gave a discreet smile, right? So, Wally smiled to herself. She didn't want them to understand her smile in which way sarcastic smile. But then, there wasn't much chance of that, was there? Will both of them understand? Now, if Wally doesn't tell them that, she has done this till then. 
the family is not going to know we know from the village to the town and from town to the village there was not a single person on the bus who will recognize wali otherwise we would have that conversation from the author but there was not a single person who can identify that wali was on the bus right so there was no chance of anybody knowing that wali had gone on an exciting excursion out of her village to the nearest town on a bus and she had come back after say one and a half or quarter to two hours right so was there any chance of them knowing no there was no chance of knowing because it's going to be a small little secret which the girl is going to keep for her lifetime until she says it to someone nobody is going to know and this whole of the story is translated from tamil yes we already discussed about that author walikaran is uh, sorry uh, the author is writing in his mother tongue that is tamil and this is translated to us by k s sundram right so a very good translation a uh, very lucid and fluid translation easy to understand all the emotions all whole of the story excitement is kept intact by the very good translation done by uh, k s sundram so here we come to the end of today's lecture plus uh, chapter number 9 that is madam rides the bus the chapter is completed over here thank you students